discuss and continue to discuss about the high electron mobility transistor. Structure of the device as I pointed out in the previous lecture is semi insulating substrate, undoped gallium arsenide, notice there is this red another color added layer added there which is undoped aluminum gallium arsenide and then heavily doped N plus layer. I just pointed out last lecture itself that this layer here is introduced a thin layer of 20 to 50 angstroms depending upon applications. Mostly it is about 20 when you want 20 angstroms when you want high transconductance. Okay, we will see that, see that later. But so that is a thin layer to ensure that the electrons here the dashed line is showing the electrons those electrons do not see the effect of this dopants. There is a layer undoped which does not have the impurities. So, to prevent the scattering, coulombic scattering, electrostatic scattering by these dopants here, an undoped layer is put all gas. But still, the notch is at this point. The notch is at the point at which there is a change from all gas to gas. Okay. And also, you can see the what we have here is n plus source layer contacts are formed by allowing good germanium on the substrate. The electrons are transported through the gallium arsenide region where doping concentration is very low. This is summing up what we discussed last time. At low temperature one can achieve very high electron mobility because ion impurity scattering is the rock bottom and mobility is well in excess of this. I just put excess of that because these numbers keep on updating every year. So, even 10 to the power of 6 people have reported at very low temperatures. So, very high mobility is at low temperature. At room temperature of course, the limitation is only lattice scattering. So, about 8500 that will be the thing that you get in the gallium arsenide which is undoped. Okay. Now, what we said also yesterday or in the previous lecture was the energy band diagram conduction band going up like this. This is a doped aluminum gallium arsenide layer and this is a thin undoped aluminum gallium arsenide layer then the notch then this is the well or the notch in which electrons are confined. What we are trying to point out is that these electrons are not just dumped there, they are actually having quantum states which has to be satisfied. That we just quickly go through that today, just if this were a quantum well you know, instead of a shape like this, if it is an infinite quantum well a flat bottom there, then what would be the distribution that is what we are seeing and the solution or equation that governs the state and the energy of these electrons is the Schrodinger equation in general wherever there is energy and potential take these values. Okay. For a particle trapped in a potential well the energy levels permitted are obtained by solving this equation. Whenever you want to solve an equation proper boundary conditions. In practice it is a finite well with a potential the boundary which is about depth is V naught. The potential is V is equal to V naught here, V is equal to 0 here. A simpler solution that gives a good idea about what happens is obtained by a infinitely deep potential energy well boundary. It is not deep, it is infinitely deep. Okay. Please note that it is deep depth is from here right up to infinity it goes, which is not a practical situation, but if it is high enough it looks it is so high for the electrons it looks it cannot mount across mount through that. Okay. So, in a finite boundary it is like this. In a classical particle if a particle is here in the potential well it has no chance to cross this barrier. 
a classical particle we say it will remain all through its life here. Okay. Whereas, unless it gets an extra energy to go through that, there is a quantum mechanical concept. The difference is that these particles which are look also like waves, behave like waves also have some probability that they can be found here, probability they are finite. If you infinite of course, there is no probability that the wave function can overlap into this. When you say the wave functions overlap into this portion outside this well is that there is a chance that some of the electrons may be there. If there are hundreds of thousands of electrons, few of them may be there, that is a chance, that is a probability. That is the implication, that is the difference between a classical particle and a quantum mechanical particle. So, now quickly running through the solution that we have discussing last time. In the region where this potential V is equal to 0, okay, you substitute V equal to 0 in the Schrodinger equation, you get that equation. T squared psi by T x squared plus 2 m by x squared E into psi of x, where psi psi star or psi square is the probability of occupation in a small volume. You cannot say probability of occupation at a particular point. It has to be a particular region. If it is one dimensional, it is delta x. If it is one three dimensional, delta v. So, that is the probability. So, psi star squared into delta v is probability in that volume. Psi squared into dx dy dz integrated over the entire volume, probability is 1. The chance that you find it somewhere here in this well, that will be 1. So, that is the equation which governs some of these things. Now, you can see that instead of E minus V, I have just put V E there because this that is the equation within the well. So, you have to solve the Schrodinger equation within the well with the boundary condition psi is equal to 0 at x equal to psi is equal to 0 here because this boundary is high. That you are telling is beyond that point probability of occupation is 0. Similarly, beyond this so I put it to the right, it has to look like double L, but it is one L there. Beyond this point, the probability of occupation is 0, probability of finding is 0, that is psi is 0. So, you solve that equation with those boundary conditions, psi is 0 at x equal to 0 and L. Now, this is a second order differential equation. So, solution will have sin x and cos sin k x and cos k x terms, where k is actually 2 m by x square, d square psi by d x square plus okay, k square into e. So, k is root of that. So, that is the thing. So, solution will have sin k x and cos, cos k of x, but cosine function cannot exist because at x equal to 0 cos function is not 0. As x equal to 0, it must be 0. So, you write the solution, though there are sin k x cos, cos k x terms, you write only this. A maximum value in sin k of x. Okay. Now, here k is that root of that quantity, this quantity 2 m e by x square, e also is there part of k. Okay, 2 m e by x square, per root of that, that is 2 m e by x bar. Okay. There is no pi here, but it is that quantity. Now, other thing that you would say is at x equal to L, also this, this term should go to 0. So, at x equal to L, psi of will be x, L will be 0, okay, if k into L equal to n into pi, n varying from 1, 2, 3. So, n are the eigenvalues, number, integer numbers, which take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So, now, with that condition, psi equal to 0 at x equal to L, then k is equal to n pi by L, where n takes 1, 2, 3 values. So, now, k, you know, it is equal to that quantity k is that quantity and k also should be equal to n pi by L. So, from here you get, you immediately know that n takes values 1, 2, 3. If the potential value is infinitely high, you will have infinite number of energy levels. So, corresponding to each n, you have got one energy level. That means, actually, this is where you say the energy is quantized. You have got certain permitted energy levels with permitted psi that is the wave functions, you can call again psi 1, psi 2, psi 3 or phi 1, phi 2, phi 3 corresponding to E 1, E 2, E 3. So, E 1 is phi squared x squared divided by 2 m l squared. Okay. Now, you notice how much is this quantity 
depends upon that L and the spacing between the two levels depends upon L. N is equal to 2, it is 4 times that P 1, but as L is made double, the width quantum L becomes longer, wider, the energy becomes smaller, the gap between them becomes smaller. If there is no quantum L, the huge region energy level is continuous. So, that is why in a conduction band, there is no quantum well, the energy level is continuous. L is actually tends into infinite, the energy difference tends into infinite. Okay. Continuous energy permitted levels are there, but the moment you have like in the case of a heterojunction, you have a potential varying like that, you have got a finite L. Okay. In the case of, uh, in the case that we are discussing, that L is actually the notch width, but the notch is not flat, it is just moving like that. We cannot say what exactly is L is, it is somewhere 50 to 80 angstroms, very small value. So, this is the understanding that we have got. So, energy is quantized, only certain values of energy are allowed E 1, E 2, E 3, E 4. Okay. The integer n is quantum number, the particular wave function psi n corresponding to E n. Okay. They define the quantum state of the particle. When you say quantum state, psi and E are the ones. These are of course, the terminologies that are used. The understanding finally is, there are, you do not permit all the energy levels in a quantum well. There are only certain levels for one electron that is considered. If there are number of electrons, they will tend to go into that particular E 1, that E 1 will spread into a sub band. Similarly, E 2 will spread into sub band. Okay. So, you have instead of having continuous energy levels, you will have sub bands which are seen. Okay. Now, this is whatever we have said in the equation, see the psi 1 or phi 1, I just called phi 1 to instead of saying psi for wave function, phi 1 is a particular n equal 1, E 1 is at n is equal to 1, corresponding to that the wave function is like this x equal 0, a psi is equal to 0, psi equal to 0. Corresponding to n equal to 2, you have got full sine wave coming up. That is a wave function 3, it is like that. In all cases, the wave function is 0 here, 0 there, but they just and you can see the spacing here will keep on increasing. If it is an infinite potential well, the infinite number of levels will be there and zero chance for this wave function to come. What will be the case if there is a finite well? I am not going to solve that, because it will take another one hour to solve that. In fact, you solve within the well by the same way. You solve also outside the well. When it is finite well, there is a chance that, there is a probability that you can find these electrons on the other side. So, these wave shapes, wave functions will follow the same, except this will not become equal to 0. In fact, what will happen will be, if you solve that, what you have to do is solve, write down the equation for this region with the same 2 m e by h squared as k squared. Here, you write the equation k squared is equal to 2 m e minus v naught, where v naught is a height divided by h bar squared, h bar squared. Solve the equation and there should be continuity of wave function from here to here. We are now taking that there is a chance for the electron wave function to overlap into that portion. That is, there is a probability that you can move into that region. So, when you do that, psi continuity, you get psi for here, psi here, and psi must be continuous there. d psi by dx also must be continuous. Then, what happens is like this. Just the purpose I am putting that, you have a finite potential V naught. Okay. Finite potential well. Generally, you can skip this, but I thought I will show this to you because how it is, because you will see that when you 
see all the diagrams about the hemp, you will see those diagrams. Okay. So, this is the E 1, okay, that is the energy level correspondent E 1. If it is infinite, you plot it like that, phi 1 or phi 1. If it is finite, then the probability will not go down to 0, the probability will not go down to 0, it goes something like this. there will be some probability. The wave function phi 1 or phi 1 whatever you want to call it, I call it phi 1 distinguished from the general wave function, it will go into that region. A classical particle will never, you will not think of a classical particle being here, once it is well, it is in the well. Okay. Higher energy, if you have E 2, for E 2, what you have for what you have seen there is, it is like this, that is for infinite. Finite, you will have the particular probability of occupation here and the whole thing will come something like this. Again a probability, only difference is between this and this is, this region, extended region will be more than this region. As you go to higher and higher energy, more and more overlap will be there. Understandable. If the electron is here, chance of its finding it on the other side, climbing up that barrier, going up there is better. So, E 2 will have, will extend over a longer path, longer uh, x direction. If you have still one more, it will be having even more, going up there. That of course, you can understand a particle which is jumping up on the wave, on the potential hill, potential well, if it is at higher energy, then from there it easily can go to the other side by jumping up. That is the meaning of that. So, these are look like uh, abstract equations, but they have the meaning in the sense that if it has enough energy, it can go up. So, how much it is up into this layer depends upon the this height compared to the energy. So, if the energy is up, third level, very easily it can go to the other level that will spread into that region more. Okay. And if it is 0, of course, it is everywhere. So, this is the general concept. Now, you can see. So, when you go to the finite well, you get that particular thing and you have to solve also equation with E n squared pi squared h bar squared by I think there is a, ah, it is okay. Okay, that is all right. The same equation that we wrote previously for energy n 1 2 3 and V naught will be is infinity then m n star. You want to talk of Galen arsenide, you replace that m by m n star plus equation must be modified for a finite well that is what I said just now. So, the what you get will be the one that is valid for effective mass, effective mass and V naught actually should be changed to finite V naught. So, this we come back to that diagram that we have been drawing. So, now you can see instead of being like this, the whole thing is something like that. Okay, you have a potential well which is something like that. So, you will have a level here you will have a level there and you can see also that is E 1 and E 2 okay. and the solution of course, is much more complicated. I am not attempting that here at all. What I want you to notice is, because now it is a finite well, on this side it is high, on this side it is like that. You can see the wave function is not 0 there. That means, what you are telling is, these electrons which are present in the notch have a chance to be here. If it has a chance to be here, okay, if the dopants are here, there is a chance for them to be scattered. That is why to prevent that chance of getting scattered by dopants, you put this undoped layer here. That undoped layer is because of that. If it is a classical particle, you would never have thought that I should have undoped layer. After all, the doped layer is here and electron is here. 
but now there is a probability that it is here. And if the electron is here, furthermore chance it can slide into that layer also and it not only goes there, it goes also into this side. So, you can see a sorted demon right into this region that there is some variation here. Okay. So, what we are telling now is most of these electrons will be occupied in this portion level, most of them will be confined in this layer. Okay. Because higher it goes up, it can go into that layer or spread out. Okay. So, as you keep on increasing electron concentration, it will go into this sub level here, which is not one level, it is a band there. So, now when you talk of number of electrons, it is not one level, it is a band like conduction. Instead of having a conduction band, continuous energy here, you have sub bands. So, the second sub band, first sub band. So, these terminologies, in order to explain some of these things, I went through those things, the analysis, okay, the understanding of that, because otherwise it, it leaves, at least it left it vague. When I saw these diagrams initially, usually we think of a conduction band as a continuous level, but why it is like that? It is a quantum level. Okay. So, that is why energy levels are not continuous. Okay. So, most of the electrons will be occupying the level E 1. Large electric field present in the gallium arsenide, now again the summing up that whatever we said, present in gallium arsenide severely bends the conduction band and forms a quasi triangular potential leading to quantum sub wells, sub bands. The large electric field gives us potential there and it leads this triangular quantum well, which leads to the sub bands, that is what we say there. Okay. In a mod fact, the first sub well will be filled first, most of these will be fully, it is almost completely filled, this will be partially filled. Okay. So, the mobility everything will be decided by this band mostly, there will be difference in mobility of the sub band and this sub band. We know that as you go to higher and higher energy, the mobility keeps on falling down into the higher energy band levels. So, mobility of electrons here is better compared to mobility here. From this point of view, you would not like to dump electrons into this sub band. If there are many of the electrons which are resting here, the average mobility will fall down. Okay. This we have seen earlier when you increase the concentration or energy, it can go to mobility. In the increase the energy, the mobilities, uh, the mobilities are reduced, like scattering from one level to other level. Okay, that is easy to understand that way. The second sub band at energy E2 is partially filled generally. The inset shows the wave functions here. In fact, I was not able to provide us the figure caption for this, so I have given it a next page. That is next page the figure caption for this, the whole thing. Okay. Now, the extent of electron concentration depends upon delta E c and the doping concentration in L gas. The electron concentration here depends upon how much band bending is there. The band bending depends upon the doping ratios. In Homo junction, N d N a divided by N i square logarithm of that into V t. That is what we say, it depends on the doping here in this level. Here it is undoped. So, higher the doping, more will be band bending plus delta E c. We saw that the total band bending here or total potential drop is equal to VBA what you get for Homo junction plus delta E c by Q, that additional drop is there. So, that is what we meant by saying extent of electron concentration depends upon the band bending, which depends upon delta E c and the doping. And delta E c depends upon x, that is the mole fraction. Higher the x c, x higher will be the delta E g. Higher the delta E g, 0.64 times delta E g is delta E c. That is another aspect. So, we think we can confine as much electrons as we want till we go right to x equal to 1. Instead of aluminum gallium arsenide, you put aluminum arsenide, but it does not work out that way because when you add more and more aluminum, somehow there seem to be defects being introduced and people have called those defect centers as some dx centers, this is a name that is called. 
I don't know why they call it by that name. It's a defective center, which are trap centers, which tend to trap electrons, and uh, the performance of the hemp suffers from that. Number one. Number two is, okay. So that's why the limited x to about 0.3. 0.4 gives 0.5 eg delta eg, slightly lower than that, it is not linear, slightly going up like that. So, you get close to 0.5, 0.45 delta eg. So, you will have delta eg, which is something like about 0 0.3. 0 0.32 if it is 0.5, about 0 0.3 delta eg, which gives about 24 or 12 electrons per centimeter square, okay. Gives about 24 or 12 electrons per centimeter square. So, Okay, so that is the idea. Quite good enough. It is in fact larger than the electrons that you get in the universal layer, in the MOSFET. That's close to that, 10 to 12, 11 to 10 to 12 per centimeter square. It's a charge sheet which is present there. Okay. Now, there is one more problem, technological problem. Apart from this higher aluminum concentration, introduces trap centers called DX centers. It also makes it difficult to make OB contact. If you recall, higher the band gap material, higher is the barrier head, n type particularly, higher is the barrier head, two thirds of EG, and its uh, interference latency is high. Higher the band gap, more difficult, higher the barrier head, less chance of it being. Uh, making OB contact, better OB contact. Where? In the source and drain regions. There are two things, source and drain regions and the gate region. Gate region of course, you would like the barrier head to be high. Drain region where you make the OB contact, barrier head must, must not be high, it should be OB contact. That becomes difficult. Okay. In fact, you make that N plus there by gold germanium doping, but still all that happens in those situations is like this. See, you have a high barrier height like that. You dope it heavily, then the whole thing comes down like that. Lightly doped, heavily doped. These are short key barriers. I am sorry, MS contact, metal semiconductor contact, and that is a 5 n. So, do not make it heavily doped, you will get high. Make this heavily doped, that is reduced quite a bit. How much it is reduced <coughs> depends on doping and also a combination of these two. So, if this is high already, it becomes difficult to reduce it to the extent that you want. The moment it is not reduced to the very small values, it has a finite barrier head, finite, it looks as if it is a large contact resistance. So, in fact, Way back in 1981, when I returned from US, for US on technological know-how on gallium arsenide, we wanted to project a, propose a project on gallium arsenide based devices. Immediately, the experts here, so called, asked me, do you know how to make an OE contact to gallium arsenide? It is a valid question. I am putting this across to you, because everyone worries about making OE contact to gallium arsenide, so, higher band gap. So, gallium arsenide at that time was sorted out and the answer was yes. Today, you go to gallium nitride, much wider band gap. You go to silicon carbide, the worry of for the technologist is making a good OB contact. Short key barrier, you just put a metal make a short key barrier, absolutely no problem. The OB contact is a problem. So, you want to make a field effect transistor, that is where the difficulties are in the materials like gallium nitride silicon carbide, etcetera. Same problem is present in aluminum arsenide. When you go to L gas, when you go to x higher and higher, x higher and higher, wider band gap, higher height more, difficult to make home contact. So, that is what I am trying to point out. Plus, so that is the second problem. You put x equal 1 aluminum arsenide, that seems to be unstable. You lose, tend to lose arsenic from that. So, that material itself is unstable, then you just keep it open. 
or even raise the temperature slightly. With all those the restrictions, okay, worried about the trap centers, worried about making humic contact for source and drain, and also stability of that layer. From all those considerations, you say, okay, 0.3 x 0.3 is sufficient for me. It gives me a fairly decent MOSFET. It's not enough if you are the MOSFET. You must be able to control the charge. See, what we said is. Let me put that diagram quickly here because I do not want to keep on moving into the diagram. What we said is we can refer to this here like this every time L m arsenide, okay. Then you have the undoped L m arsenide. you have the undoped gallium arsenide okay and then you have got the aluminum gallium arsenide you may have a small layer put there which is undoped n plus this is n plus I am just leaving this diagram so that we can take a look at it undoped. And then you have got that the moment you do that, that is a notch where you have electrons locked. And then you put an plus layer here, source you put an plus layer here, which reaches right up to that point and then a drain, you apply VDS here, then we can't flow through that. That I mentioned it to you in the last lecture, because of the charges here. Okay. Let me just make clean up it a little bit, because it looks a bit crowded here. So, I just put it. that okay those are the electrons which are present and that is the undoped layer undoped aluminum gallium arsenide but the moment they put this they find the mobility is up because the scattering is reduced so there will be current through this to control that how can you control this how can I reduce this particular charge? I should be either reduce or increase. Okay. If I want to reduce that, I must reduce the band bending. Okay. So, how to do that of course, you must have another electrode which is put here, which is the gate. We will come back to this now. So, this particular charge you can reduce because that is the notch that we have shown here. Okay. That is the notch. Elemental gallium arsenide and it is a situation where there is no gate. Okay. Just like this and that is a variation. Forward bias voltage is equal to 0 thermal equilibrium situation because and electrons are locked up here of course, it is E 1 and E 2 energy. They are not just staying there in as a gas there, though you call it as electron gas, 2 D electron gas, it is quantized electrons. Now, when you forward by this, see what is the polarity of this potential? Plus here, minus there, because this is plus, it has contributed electrons to this. So, that negative charges will be as electrons and also as a decreasing layer charge. So, if I want to reduce this barrier height, I must reduce the decreasing layer width. If I have to reduce the repletion layer width, how it possible? Reduce the potential drop. Okay. And when you reduce the potential drop, that can be done if this is plus, this is minus. That is, this has a plus charge here, this is a minus charge. Here you have got all those 
immobile acceptors plus minus. This is where the potential is and the plus is here, minus is here. If you apply a reverse voltage or forward bias, making this plus and this minus, that is like taking p injection forward bias, the barrier height is reduced. Suppose, how much should I reduce the barrier height to make the charge equal to 0 there? That extra potential that was present due to the delta E c, I was mentioning in the previous lecture. Charges are present in plenty here, here charges are present in plenty because this barrier height under thermal equilibrium conditions is more than the homo junction by an amount equal to delta E c by q. You reduce that by that amount, automatically the charges come down to low value that is this whatever was intrinsic point here will shift towards this point. Like in the MOSFET, if the potential drop in the P region is reduced, the inversion is reduced. You come out of inversion. Similarly, here the potential barrier reduced by forward biasing plus minus V f, the charge is reduced. So, you must be able to apply a bias across the junction to remove those charges plus minus. Okay. So, all these charges will be removed and put on there. Supposing I have a gate. If I apply a potential between the two forward bias, what, what is the meaning of that? I remove the charge input on the other side, where the negative terminal is there. From this region, I take it to negative terminal, charge is more negatively compared to this. So, that is why you have got that uh, charge is removed, automatically potential is reduced. Now, few things we have to see here. As the diagram is shown here, it is flat. If it is flat, what is the meaning of that? there is no potential drop in the ALT gas. If there is no potential drop in the ALT gas, what you say is only this portion of the aluminum gallium arsenide is depleted, the other portion is not depleted. If it is not depleted, you have, you have a worry in your hand. What is the worry? Conduction will take place due to these electrons, conduction will take place due to those electrons on this side here. So, when the MOSFET is operating, this entire layer must be depleted. That must be depleted. Okay. Look at this portion here. Above this, what does it look like? Above this, I do not see this portion at all. Just above this, only aluminum gallium arsenide. If I see, it looks like MOSFET, source drain OV contacts, gate Schottky barrier, n type region. Okay. So, this is a MOSFET. Now, in the MOSFET, you can deplete the channel completely by the built in potential itself okay. or apply a negative voltage to the gate, so that the entire channel is depleted. What is the voltage required to apply to the gate? So, that this channel is fully depleted, that is the threshold voltage of the MOSFET. That is V B i minus V P 0, V B a of this junction, not the V B a of this junction, V B a of the short key barrier minus pinch off voltage gives you the voltage that we have supplied to the gate to the pinch off completely. Okay. Now, if you just pinch off here. A situation will be there, the depletion layer will be just coming up to certain point. Let, okay. Let me go back to the diagram and see, if you take this cross section here, this portion, this is a very crucial thing which you must watch. Easy to understand that portion because you are already familiar. Now, when the depletion layer, it, so the field for this are in this direction. Correct? The depletion layer due to the short key barrier gives rise to electric field in that direction. Now, let us say there is a depletion layer here. This I you can ignore that layer, undoped layer, because very thin. Let us say the whole thing is the whole thing is doped, and this is 
total width and there will be a small depletion layer here with plus charges. I am just ignoring that small spacer layer, which is an undoped layer is also called as a spacer layer or setback layer. Terminologies or setback layer. Just a name, I just forgot to tell you about that. It is an undoped layer where it is spacing between the two, just a thin spacer layer. Okay. So, now I am just ignoring that effect of that because very thin. The depleted layer here will be having, see in this portion here, we have got a this portion is a depletion layer where there is potential variation. Now, what we are trying to do is you put a gate there. Schottky barrier whose depletion layer spreads right up to this point. We apply voltage which is coming close to this point. So, the feed lines of this portion will be terminating on the left hand side. The feed lines here are terminating onto the metal. Depletion layer of the Schottky barrier is going like that. Where are the feed lines from here? Where are they terminating? down. See, this is the hetero junction that we have been talking so far. So, you have a MOSFET along with this hetero junction. So, this hetero junction has plus charge here, minus charge here. So, you have feed lines like this here, feed lines like that. And once the depletion layer merges with that, you are safe. Okay. So, let us go into the analysis for that what is the situation now. So, if that point is clear, that is there are field lines, fully depleted layer is there, but most of the depletion layer is interacting with the gate, short key barrier, part of that is interacting with the V n junction, field in the opposite direction. Now, ultimately you must reduce the field in this direction. If I reduce the field in this direction, what happens? This collapses, and what happens to that boundary? Let me draw that here. See, if I take n plus, if I take n plus algas. There is a depletion layer here. I am just putting that diagram without all these things. And this is the gallium arsenide P minus undoped. And there is a depletion layer here. There are plus there is a metal here. That is a gate. Okay. And there is immersion layer here. There are plus charges here. These plus charges belong to the depletion layer of the Schottky barrier. They are moving field lines in this direction here. That is the entropy direction. These charges here belong to the junction, and those field lines are. here okay e1 e2 for outsider that is when you apply voltage between these two the entire layer is depleted part of it is belonging to this part of the depletion is belonging to that so long as that condition is satisfied it's okay but now current flow be through this current flow will be actually through this, because entire layer is depleted there. I drew it there, because slightly more clarity is there in the diagram. Okay. Now, this is making contact with the, this particular layer. If I apply voltage between these two, 
okay, to the substrate there you are applying. Okay, you are making contact with that here. That is making contact with that. This this contact. Okay, I the N plus is making contact with this layer directly. Okay, let us not worry about that. Let us see. Suppose I make this more negative. See what you require to do is. There is a drop here. If it goes all the way up to this point, the channel is pinched totally. That means the entire diffuse layer belongs to that. Okay, but you don't have to go all the way up to that. You will have to go very close to that pinch off point, very close to VBA minus VP zero because part of the voltage is taken care of by the other junction. So still we'll say VBA minus VP zero is the voltage required to pinch off the voltage. Deplete the whole thing. Okay. Now, at this point, this is the diffusion layer boundary. How is the electric field distribution now? You have all, you know, the slides; they are all there, but I just put it on the board so that you can just take a look at this. How is the electric field distribution? This is a junction. Okay. That is a zero. If I take that is the peak point as far as junction is concerned. Then you got the field coming like this. Let me just draw that slightly. I need more space there. That is the peak point. That is the electric field. See from the loop, because there is some charge is present here. Due to that, you will have some additional field coming up here. This is takes only depleted charge. Because there are charges charge sheet here, this may slightly go up there to accommodate that. I'm just leaving that out. And here, it's coming down like that. What about the electric field here? That is negative. What about the slope of the electric field when I plot? Same. See the slope of the field, electric field versus x is decided by doping here. So the doping is the same thing. It is zero here. Comes down till you reach the boundary. So this is E one. That is E two. This is zero. So this is E one, and that is E two. Here, that is in that direction. This is in that direction. Okay. Why it is pointed out? This is. When I keep on depleting, coming up to this point, what will be the potential distribution now? Okay, now let me just uh, go into those. So all these I just discussed now. I think I can come back to it later. So if I have this particular electric field zero, if I move from here to here, there is a potential variation. Wherever changes are there. Wherever the field becomes zero, potentially is not zero; it is minimum. If I go from here, that direction, what will be the way the potential be? So if you plot the potential, I think I have it already there. I will not plot that. If you plot the potential, if you go to that particular diagram, we will come back to this afterwards. All these analysis will come back to afterwards. This is the diagram. See, the electric field actually is peak there. That is the Kelly arsenide. This is the gas, and this is the zero electric field, which would mean the potential will actually be. This is actually the energy band diagram. See, the previous diagram what we showed was they were coming like this. Then flat. Instead of being flat, it is plus here, minus here now. Energy band diagram. It is plus here, minus there. Energy band diagram. Depletion layer. Plus here, minus there. Okay. So this is the diagram. When I applied the voltage, 
up to this point when I keep on increasing negative voltage to the gate, it will keep on moving up to this point because till this depletion layer merges, there is a contact between this and this point. It is better to see in this diagram. Till the depletion layer reaches here, for example, when it is here like this, when the depletion layer is, I have the charges, when the depletion layer is up to that point and the depletion layer here is like this. See, as I keep on increasing negatively EGS, this particular thing is already there, correct? because of hetero junction. What I am doing is I am applying voltage between these two negative. As I keep on increasing what happens? Depletion layer keeps on widening. Okay. Because there is direct contact here. This is virtually sorted out. You do not have transfer of electrons from here to there. This is the short key barrier which is acting. There is no control of this on this. You solve it? In fact, if you see this diagram here, okay, if I have this depletion layer that is there whether this metal is there or not. Okay. So, when I apply voltage is negative with respect to this quantity and if I keep on increasing that negatively, depletion layer keeps on moving. In fact, what will happen will be over here you have got this already that you have got and over here what will happen will be ultimately it will come with that as you keep on increase the voltage can you sketch the electric field plus minus um, okay. electric field in that direction depletion keeps on widening like that like that ultimately like that. Till that time you are not touching that charge. See the interesting part here is when you apply voltage to the gate, if the VBI is lower than VP0, that is easy to understand. Depletion layer width is much smaller than A. If I want to deplete, I must apply 90 voltage till that reaches and touches that point, this point. So, that is the point at which you have got this depletion layer. What happens beyond that is the question. If I increase the voltage beyond this point, this is the point at which the entire layer is depleted and there is no contact here now. You do not have contact here because it is the insulating layer now. If the whole thing is depleted, even though this is there, there is nothing, but that is reaching into this. So, if I increase the voltage beyond that point, what happens is? what happens? The charge from here will be reduced. Okay. In fact, the charge from here reduced means actually depletion layer will fall. In fact, the voltage appears now from here and here or here, actually it is here. So, you are removing the charge and putting on the other side. When you apply negative voltage, when you apply negative voltage, if you take a capacitor and apply negative voltage to some point, you are putting the negative charge and applying to the other side, more negatively charged negative terminal is more negatively charged. So, you are removing that reporting up there. When you remove that charge, automatically what happens? Potential barrier is lower. See the charge the amount you remove, it is possible only by lowering the potential barrier, which means the depletion layer collapses. If the depletion layer here collapses, what happens to the depletion layer here? Collapses. This charge reduces. Does it mean that this layer will open up? See, whole thing is you have removed the charge from here, so which has reduced the depletion layer charge, which has reduced the depletion layer charge, but the total thing is insulated. Okay. There is additional voltage appearing between the two, so that has gone into this layer. So, what happens is this boundary 
with the zero field moves to the right you get the entire thing moving like this thickness layer narrowed thickness layer here narrowed here it is widened the whole thing is insulated so you have got till that depleted condition you still have you can go on removing the charge in fact some more things details about that i will continue in our next lecture the idea is this the gate control can push the thickness layer to this region and can remove the charge from here more that i make less charge less thickness layer width that is a forward bias appears across that how much am i supply here is equal to delta ec by q okay we'll discuss what actually is the threshold voltage of this modfet now next lecture <laughs>